Astro has had a database solution for a long time called AstroDB. The really smart thing is you get this local SQL Lite database that you can work with in dev, and then you can push it to a production database. Today, I want to talk about pushing it to one of those called Terso. Terso is a SQL Lite hosted service that you can use to store production databases. And that's what we're going to do today. I want to show you how to hook it up, how to push your schema, how to even push up seed data, and then interact with that data both in dev and production mode. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so we've got a very basic site laid out here. You can see that we have a database that has some comments in it. I just stole this, I think, from the actual Astro Docs. So very, very simple, but we've seeded this with some data. Now, ultimately, we need to get this up somewhere. In this case, we want to get it up on Terso. Astro used to have a solution for this, but it was backed by Terso. So now, essentially, they're removing kind of their middleman, and they're using Terso instead. I've created a free account and done nothing else beyond that. So let's just walk through this together. And you'll see there's actually going to be a guide over here. You do need to install the Terso CLI, which I've already done over here in macOS. I'm just doing this with Brew. And then you should be set and ready to go. Now, you'll need to log in and sign up to Terso. And you'll do that actually when you go ahead and authenticate the CLI. If you haven't done that before, you can come over here. You'll see that you can do Terso auth login. Obviously, this only works if you already have the CLI installed. So let's just do that together here. I'm going to come over here and Terso auth login. It should open it up over here authenticate me and now we should be good. So that's all you have to do. Now you'll see here it says to create a new database with Terso DB create. And in fact, if we came over here, it would say the exact same thing. So we'll say something like Terso uh, DB create and we'll just call this like Terso uh, Astro uh, Tut. I don't remember if there's any uh, stipulations on the name. It looks like we're good. Okay, so it's got it ready for us here. And if I come back over here, you'll see that the next thing we need to do is run show whatever that thing happens to be. Now this shows the information about the newly created database. And then you're going to create the, uh, grab the URL from that and add this in a .env file. It does need to be named astro underscore db underscore remote underscore URL because that's what it's going to look for when it builds this, which we'll look at here in a second. So let's go ahead and do this. So terso db show, all that kind of stuff. Let's see terso db show. And then we're going to do terso. I should have named this something shorter, right? Astro tut like that. This should show me everything I need to know, including the URL. And this is the one I need to have. So right here, this is what we're going to use. We'll add this to our Astro DB remote URL. So I'm going to actually copy this as well and open this over here. I don't have a .env file yet, so I can just create this with .env and then we'll paste this in and I'll paste in that URL. All right, so it should be just like that. And you'll see I need to get uh, create a new token to authenticate request to this particular database. Now, obviously, I'm going to remove this later, but at least for now, I'll show you what this should look like. Um, and that way you can kind of see it yourself. So let's add this here. And then obviously I need to create my own. So DB tokens create, and then you have to pass in the name of the database. Now, because I happen to make this thing so long, let's see if we can't, oh, look, that warps helping me out. I was going to try to copy up from above. So this is what I'm going to grab right here. And I'm going to paste this in the place of um, this sample token. All right, finally, you can push this and this pushes your DB schema and the metadata to the new Terso database. So let's do that next. So we've already got this all connected up, and these two things are what Astro is going to look for when it tries to push something. So finally, I'll come back over this way, and we're just going to push this like this, Astro DB push. All right, MPX Astro DB push, I think. All right, so that should work, and it's going to push to the remote. And I should be able to see some of that if I come back over this way, and we look at databases. There we go. We've actually got this right here. I can scan this and look at the edit data here. See, we don't have anything. We have got the comments here, but there's no actual data. We didn't push the data. We pushed the schema, and that's important. So back over to the uh, the Astro Docs here. You can relax. I don't know what this does because uh, I've never used it. So let's see. Terso relax. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, well, that's not relaxing to me. I'm just going to, um, you know, panic as I lose. But now that you've got that, you can actually connect to that remote database in a bunch of different ways. So the most normal thing you'll typically want to do is use this remote flag. You can use this either in build or in dev, and this will allow you to add and remove data from your database that's in production. So obviously you want to be very careful with this, but eventually when you're going to build, you want to build with your you know actual data instead of your sample dev data. So you would do that by coming over to the Astro, um, can actually the package.json right here, and you're just going to update this build flag by adding remote. Now, the env file takes care of everything else. Obviously, if you're deployed on like uh, Vercel or Netlify or wherever else, you want to make sure that you've actually pushed those env variables up. 
Uh, and like they're mentioning here, you want to be very careful when you're using remote in development um, because obviously you could be overwriting your production database. Now they mentioned here a few more URL configuration options. This allows you to use both HTTP and WebSockets as a transport protocol for your remote server. And you'll see here that you can use like a local file. So there's a little bit more complexity here, but I'll leave you to that if you want to play around with that. Uh, LibSQL also has native support for encrypted databases. So if that's something you need, uh, you can uh, pay attention to this as well with the encryption key. There's a bunch of other details here as far as syncing, how you sync it. But now that we've got that, what we ultimately want to do is push this up. So we're going to do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to come back over this way. And uh, you can see the seed here needs a name and a body for each of these to add items here. So let's just go ahead and create an Astro action that will then take in some kind of form input and add that to my database. So I'll come over here. Let's just create an actions folder. And here we'll have an index.ts file. And I'm just going to paste some of this in to kind of speed us up a little bit. You'll see that it's just defining an action called add comment, where we'll accept some kind of form data that has a name and a body input field then eventually we want to actually add this to our database. So let's go ahead and do that down this way. So we're going to follow the same pattern actually as our seeds. So if I come over here, you'll see we're just going to DB uh, insert our comment and then we'll pass in the values here. So let's go ahead and steal this actually. And we will just await since we're already in an async method. And here we'll do DB insert. So I'll need to go ahead and pull this in, which I can do from astro colon DB. Now comment is also something I need to pull in from my actual schema. Now we should be able to pass in our values. And in this case, we're just going to pass in those two items, which would be the name and the body. So that should automatically insert it. In fact, if we want to, we could capture this in some way and then re like return, I don't know, true or something like that. So it doesn't really matter what we do in this case. All we know is that we now have an action that's defined where we can add a comment. But just a reminder that if you're going to be doing this kind of uh, work, on a post route, which is what these um, index, these actions are, we'll need to go ahead and add some kind of like SSR adapter. So let's do that now. I'm going to come back over here. Let's add the Vercel adapter, and this should make sure that we're ready to go. So there we go. I'll add all those items. We'll npm run dev, and then we'll add one more thing, which would be some kind of form on the front end that then is able to grab all those. So let's come back over to our index over here. And let's see, just below, how about we do it just above these comments here? We'll have another one with a class of comments just for the sake of styling here. And I'm going to simply add a form. All right, for sake of time, I just pasted that in there. If we jump over back here and we refresh, there we go. Very ugly, but we've added a little form for a name and a comment. So now what we need to do is capture this somehow. So I'll come over here. Let's just add a class or let's do an ID. We'll call this comment form like that. And then let's go ahead and write a little bit of JavaScript where we interact with that. All this is going to be basically pushing this up to our database. So I'll come over here and we'll add a script tag. And then let's just write a little bit of JavaScript. All right, so we've selected that form. Now we're going to do an event listener here where we're going to pick off both of those items. Now the easiest thing would just be to use the form data API. Let's call this form data and we'll grab this from new uh, form data. And here we just need to pass in the name of the form or the actual form itself. In this case, we've selected it already. Or we could also use like e.currentTarget or something like that as well. And we should probably just say that this is a uh, HTML form element like that. So it stops yelling at us. <laughs> and then we'll grab all those items and pass that along to our action. Now, again, the way you do this in Astro with these Astro actions, we've got an async function here. We're just simply going to await. And in this case, we want to call that action. So we'll grab our actions dot add comment. And here we'll just pass in the actual form data. Now it's accepting form data, which is why we can pass in the form data API and it handles picking off each of those items. Now, importantly here, because we are expecting something with the name of body and the name of name, in fact, you can see that if I come to my actions right here, we're expecting them like this. We need to name those inputs the exact same thing. So did this work? Well, let's see. All right, so we're going to have this um, like kind of database seated here. So if I come over here and we say something like Chris and comment, something and then we add this comment there we go it's actually added it directly here you'll see we actually are also refreshing the page which we don't really want to do <laughs> so uh, that might be one more thing to think about here uh, so we'll make sure that we grab the event we'll say e dot prevent default like that okay so let's now try again i'll get rid of that we'll say something and something and we'll add a comment and now the way we have it is we haven't actually like live grabbed this so i have to refresh it's not a big deal the point is we're actually adding content here locally now here's the case i want to actually push this all up over this way 
Now, if we actually want to push the seed data up to the remote database, we can use MPX Astro DB execute, and then we actually push the seed itself up to the remote. So in this case, it would just push those few files. And you can see that if I jump back over to my database, I should actually see that content showing up. All right, there we go. It just took a second to come in and we pushed in both of those items. Now you saw a second ago that when we actually build this, we can use the live data up here to actually, you know, to, to use it. Let's go ahead and kind of do the opposite here. If I come inside here, we change this to Astro 12 and say like, I don't know, don't enjoy, <laughs> all right? Whatever this happens to be. Now this data right here, let's save it to make sure that's updated. Uh, we want to actually see this using like in our dev mode. Well, what we could do is come over to our package.json and add this remote flag here. But then every time we're working in dev mode, we're working with our production database. So I don't really want to do that. So let's do like dev um, prod DB or something. All right, you can name this whatever you want, but we'll do astro dev, and then we'll use the remote database. And what this means is when I run this particular command, it will use my remote database, my actual production database. So npm uh, run, and then we'll run the dev prod DB. Now, what this will do is connect to Terso, which means whenever I make changes, it will actually publish to my production database. On top of that, notice here, these are actually from the production database, Astro 12, and don't enjoy. So again, uh, Chris, and we'll say something, and then add a comment. And then if I come back over here and we refresh, eventually, this should show up in my production database over here. All right, I had to refresh a couple times, but it did eventually get in here. Um, so you can see it's pulling in here. I'm not sure why the delay there. Maybe it just takes a bit when you first get started. So here you can run it in dev. And then obviously when you're building, you want to use your production database. But usually when you're just like playing around in your app and, you know, developing it, you want to only be ever working with your dev database. But those are a couple of ways to work with Terso. And that's basically it. It takes care of everything else that abstracts all that. Again, Astro Studio, which was something Astro used to have, was built on top of Terso. You can see you get 100 databases for free. You get five gigabytes of storage. So all this is on the free tier. And you can see how, you know, it'd be hard to get past that on kind of a lot of simple projects. But I hope that's a huge help. If you're interested more in AstroDB, let me know. It's been a bit since I've done a video on it, but I hope this at least was a help to connect everything with Terso. Thanks so much for watching. I trust that was a help. If you're interested in more in-depth tutorials on how to work with databases and with Terso in particular with Astro, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.